Hey, what's going on? This is Eric with Olympic Health Physics, and today we're going to be talking about processing the Jake's Act band. Welcome back. Today, we're going to be talking about how to process the images from our JZAC Phantom. If you're interested in learning how to uh, prepare the JZAC Phantom and acquire the JZAC Phantom, check out our uh, description below where I have a link to our video from last week where you can check that out. But let's go ahead and get over to the processing station and figure out how we can process the images off of our Phantom. So each system is a little bit different uh, when it comes to processing the Phantom. So I'm gonna walk you through just how this system is set up and you should be able to take, um, take what you learn here and be able to apply that to your specific gamma camera. So the first thing that I wanna do is actually take a look at the images here in a um, rotation. And I'm looking specifically for any bounce between, uh, between the heads, which I don't see. So this looks good. I'm going to go ahead and complete that study. Now I've loaded my uh, raw images into a uh, processing algorithm. I'm going to go back to the quality control. I'm going to look at the sinogram and the linogram. I'm looking for any shifts between the detectors here. And I don't see any, so uh, we've got good head registration between the two detectors, so that's good. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to go in and change the uh, filter. I want to use a filter back projection and use a Butterworth filter. For this system, I am actually familiar with this camera, and so I want a cutoff of about 0.45 and I want an order of five. I know this is gonna give me pretty good images on this system. You can play around with this a little bit. We can maybe move the order to six and cut off. I find anywhere between about a 0.4 and 0.55 will work. Uh, each system is different, so you will need to play around with it a little bit and see what works best for your system. I'm going to move my regions out so that I am only processing the slices that I want. I'm not going to worry too bit, uh, much about the masking and centering. I'm going to come over to change attenuation correction. We want our attenuation coefficient set to 0.11. And I always change this to a 9 by 9 kernel. Create your boundaries and then we're going to apply a correction. Now you can see in your transaxial slices uh, before we applied the correction. Here, let's remove the correction. You can see the edges of the Phantom are a little bit hot and the center is not quite as hot. And the reason is, is because the photons in the center of the Phantom are less likely to uh, escape the Phantom and interact with the detector. So it's more likely that we'll detect the ones from the edges, which is why the edge is hotter. And so we just, when we apply that correction, the attenuation correction can smooth that out so that we create a very uh, uniform image. We're gonna go on to our uh, flex display and I'm gonna change this so that I only see the transaxial slices. I don't wanna see the sagittals and um, the coronals. I also wanna have a slice thickness of two. That's gonna give me the right slice thickness to look at decrease the number of slices per row, but let's increase our rows per series. And now we've got nice transaxial slices. This camera actually looks pretty good. We got a little bit of a ring showing right here, maybe a little bit in this slice. But other than that, this, uh, this does look fairly good. We've got good contrast, good resolution. So I would, um, I would definitely accept these images. If you want to do a composite resolution image, simply right click You can go to properties and we can change uh, the slice thickness to something like 12. And let's go back in and change slices per row. There we go. And we can zoom this out a little bit. And there we've got a nice composite resolution image. So if you're submitting this to the ACR, this would be a good image to submit. Um, that one might be even a little bit better. Coming back to the transaxial slices, 
I already talked a little bit about the uniformity and uh, ring artifact that's uh, in a couple of these slices that are not really that concerned about. The other things that you want to look at is the number of contrast spheres that you can um, see. For the ACR, we need to be able to see at least the 25.4 millimeter uh, sphere, which is the second one. So as long as we've got one, two spheres, we're okay. We can see down to the fourth one for sure. That's 15.9. And the 12.7 is almost coming in there. So this has got a pretty good contrast. As far as resolution goes, we're going to flip back over to that uh, composite resolution image. And for our resolution, we need to be able to see at least the 11.1 millimeter rods, which is the um, also the second uh, wedge in the rod section of the Phantom. And we can see the second wedge very well with high contrast, and I would even call the third wedge with, uh, with high contrast as well, which is the 9.5 millimeter uh, slices. So this camera would uh, have really good scores for ACR, which will translate to good images for your patients. Okay, so now you know how to process your JZAC Phantom, how to look at the images, what good images look like, and uh, what the acceptable criteria is for the ACR. And that wraps up how to uh, process your images on the JZAC Phantom. Again, if you want to check out how to, or want to know more about how to um, prepare and acquire the JZAC Phantom, you can check out the description below. I have a link to our other video on that. If you do have any questions about the JZAC Phantom, how to acquire it, how to process the images, what good images should look like, feel free to drop us a note and we'll be happy to um, help you out any way that we can.